College of Davidson, North Carolina, just north of Charlotte, where the legend of Stephen Curry began to grow. His jersey number 30 hanging from the rafters here at Belk Arena. And today is Wildcats host another program with rich history. The St. Joe's Hawks think Jameer Nelson and that great team from 2004. It's an Atlantic 10 matchup. Check the standings. VCU slim lead and a big game to follow right here on USA at 2.30 Eastern against surprising Fordham with its first 20-win season since 1991. St. Joe's trying for its first winning season since 2016. Davidson, 11 and 14 overall, has not had a losing season in 21 years. One. Yeah, I like this matchup a lot. Here's why. Excellent guard play both ways. Perimeter offenses, free-flowing. These guys have a lot of freedom to make plays. Greer the third. Guard-driven offense for the Hawks. Reynolds, good feed. And a nice finish. Ejike Obina, 6'10", grad student from Nigeria and a transfer from Vanderbilt. And the elder statesman for St. Joe's. This is his sixth year of college basketball. Learned his trade in the SEC. Fashion way for the Hawks, and they lead 3-1 in the early going. That foul was on Desmond Watson. Good, strong take by Grant Huffman, the junior from Ohio, off a 10-point game against St. Louis. Ball can dribble pass, shoot. See a lot of flare screens, pin downs, and a lot of dribble handoff as well. Desmond Watson, their most physical athletic player. Cameron Brown. Brown trying to shake off a subpar game against Duquesne on Wednesday night. Fleming to the cup and finished. Let's see why his coach thinks he has a chance. He's only 18 by Jun Lee as well. He was going to get a look from the NBA, but hurt his foot. He's on the way back. And that is strong on the interior by Obina. That name sounds familiar. Well, his father was one of the all-time greats at Temple. There's the stroke that was missing on Wednesday from Cameron Brown. In the country, in block shots, it's a real concern. Some finish by Cameron Brown falling down, able to get it off. And St. Joe's back on top, 12-10. Good start for Cameron Brown. That's good news for Hawks fans. Good decision. Lynn Greer will let it go and buries it. 10-2 run, St. Joe's, they're up by seven. Well, Davidson needed that. David Scopeman, and he can shoot it from deep. He's off a good game, 12 points and nine boards in that loss to St. Louis. Transfer from Buffalo. Winborn, St. Joe's doesn't get a whole lot from its reserves. Just one field goal in that last game. That was Winborn. Greer, corner three, rattles home. Pepe Sanchez. Yeah, remember Kevin lied. John Cheney's teams could defend too. You know, historically, Davidson has always been a great three-point shooting team. This team has not been that kind of a shooter. Cochera. That looked good. Yeah, and Cochera is the guy they could really use. He went off against UMass with 29 points. Five to shoot. Reynolds. Drives and scores, and he's fouled. Chance for a three-point play. Eric Reynolds as the shot clock was expiring. Eric Reynolds is the heart and soul of this team. He, he's the leader. Last year, year before, he was the number three guy behind Taylor Funk, Jordan Hall. Now he's finding out how challenging it is to play as the featured guy in the scouting report. Five to shoot. Menenga going to work, bully ball. Oh, gorgeous feed to a cut, and Reed Bailey along the baseline. Enough patience and presence of mind to finish that play. Well done, Sam Menenga. He's got game, and it's a 10-point lead for St. Joe's. They needed that. Sam Menenga just fighting his way to the hole. Pass the bucket and the foul. Good idea here by Matt McKillop. They really struggle athletically to cover St. Joe's, so they come out in a zone defense. Obina, footwork. That's pretty right there. You appreciate that as 
an outstanding center in your own right. Great plus for the Hawks if he can get going offensively. Lawyer, just one of six in that first half. Make it two of seven. Crafty move. Talking about Creased. Essendoka. And the run out the stop by Desmond Watson. Greer, baseline, Fleming. I'll give you a look at why his coach thinks if he continues to develop, he could be one of the all-time greats at a school that has had plenty of standout players. Kicked it back out. Bailey needs to get going, drive, and he's blocked. Excellent defense by Fleming. And too easy for Cameron Brown. Maybe the problem that the Wildcats have had this year, they are just not athletic like other teams in this league. For to shoot, Scopin does, and a friendly bounce. Needed that. David Scopin. Average is seven per game and can shoot it from deep, 38% for the year. Away to Skogman. Six-point game. 14.35 to go. Watson into the teeth of it, doesn't get a good follow. David Skogman has come alive, and the Wildcats, who were down 10 in the first half and nine here in the second, are two within four. Coming out of halftime. Brown misses a three, but Obina with the offensive rebound. Winborn. Brown again to the rim and has it. Live with a three when I can get to the rim and get a layup. Strong body, 6'5", he's really put together. Speaking of strong, Desmond Watson, reverse on the baseline. And it's 54-51, St. Joe's with 11 minutes. 32 seconds to go here at Belk Arena. Five. Watson, shake, drive, can't get it. Good job defensively by Fleming, but on the tip, it is out to Foster Lawyer. Little behind the back, Menenga, three-pointer, has it. And Davidson is down just two. Nifty little play by the point guard, Foster Lawyer. They love him here. And Davidson, Sam Meninga. Behind the back, no look. Best offensive trip for Davidson. Spadone, back out to Huffman. Watson, seven to shoot. They still have it if they want it. Huffman drives. A sensational take by Grant Huffman. Brown pulls. Gorgeous. Good rotation on that. He is feeling it. They settled down, people. I've got this covered. That's a great feed. Huffman, the Skogman. Getting them out of their seats. Lawyer. since it was eight to seven. Great second half for Foster Lawyer, what you would expect of the team leader. And I mean, he's doing it all, both ends of the floor. Watson, the Hoffman, high off the glass. And it's a five-point lead for Davidson. Timeout, St. Joe's. Welcome back to the Foster Lawyer Show. One play at both ends of the court. He's working the baseline. Keep an eye. How much room does he cover? He kicks it. No, nobody comes with him. He's wide open. You can blow the roof off this place. And at the other end, he plays the passing lane, gets it out in transition. Des Watson with a beautiful, unselfish delivery to Huffman. Great finish by Grant Huffman. It's a 9-0 run from that McKillop's Wildcats. Credit to Davidson. Excellent defensively here in the second half. Fleming, three ball from the 
corner. He has a big body, nice looking stroke. It's of integrity. Do not foul, do not put Foster Lawyer on the foul line. Great take, Desmond Watson. Reynolds inside to Urbina. And looked like he traveled. They're gonna call a foul and a good basket. And St. Joe's will have a chance to take the lead. <laughs> What'd you think? Uh, uh, yeah, kind of like this. Beautiful delivery, middle screen. He got away with one there. He may have shifted his feet a bit. It's tough because the referees are looking for contact in the middle. Greer. Crowd wanted a walk. Instead, Fleming with a little baby hook. And we are tied at 16 seconds to go. It is Foster Lawyer. They're going to double. They want to make Foster Lawyer a passer. Seven seconds left. Watson has a clean look. No. Rebound the next. to win the game. That's it. Now, the reason that you miss this, if you make it, they can take the ball and throw it the length of the court and possibly tip it in. Down as many as 10 in the first half. That will do it. Davidson has defeated St. Joe's 76 to 75. Sam Meninga offensive rebound and the foul shot to get the job done before the home crowd.